Greetings. This is the CT Teach Podcast. My name is Christopher McClung, your podcast host with my outstanding and first time CT Teach co-host, Elena Hernandez. Go ahead and say welcome and, and hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Elena Hernandez here. Happy to finally get to be on a podcast. I'm a longtime member of CT Teach and, and glad to be here. Yeah, me too. So on this podcast, we are working to highlight CT institutes all throughout California, uh, if not the world. Therefore, we're beginning by highlighting a career technical education in Fresno County with our panelists of fantastic educators from the Fresno County Office of Education. I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Just who, So if you could share with everybody who you are and what you do. So I'm Valerie Busich. I'm the Executive Director of Career Technical Education and ROP, Regional Occupational Programs, for Fresno County. We also serve our neighbors in Madera and Mariposa County, so we're a three-county wide organization. Um, I've been the Executive Director now um, for about 14 years, been a little over 30 of my 40 years career in CTE, started out in special education, so very excited to, we were one of the original um, CTE teach participants yeah. and happy to have been part of this program for so long. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah. Hello, I'm Janet Sloan and I am the director for ROP CTE for Fresno County. Um, we are uh, a, an LEA for the CTE credential. We just were approved a couple of months back um, and I oversee that program along with working with other districts um, in our county and also the CTE Teach program as well. Nice. Welcome, Janet. I, hi, I'm Chris Hawkins, and I have been a CTE teacher for over 20 years. I was a BITSA mentor teacher for CTE teachers in Clovis Unified for almost oh, 15 years, and then became a mentor teacher working with Janet about three and a half years ago. Fantastic. Well, welcome. So first, we wanted to say thank you all for being here. And thank you, those of you who are listening and watching this podcast. Uh, this podcast was created in partnership with the California Department of Education. And the purpose of this podcast is to just bring forth discussions and um, everything that's regarding teaching, education, mentoring, and most of all, career technical education. So first, we have a game that we want to play. And I, I'll throw this out there because our audience won't know this unless I say it. We tried to record this last, I think, a week or two ago. This podcast or this recording was interrupted by a huge earthquake in Fresno. And so we cut short. And so we're all keeping our fingers crossed that we get through this game because we didn't make it through the first time. Um, so if we get past question seven, we, we know we're, we're okay. So uh, here's the game. The game is called, and let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right. So the game is called... Do you know Fresno? And so Elena and I have 10 random facts that are about Fresno. Six of them are true, four of them are not. As a panelist, all you need to do is just agree upon what you say is true and which ones are false. And then at the end, we'll have the full list of all of the facts. And again, you guys can work together. You have to decide which of the four are false, which of the ones are true. Um, if you win, you get an entire warehouse full of brownie points. Um, if you lose, you are subjected to having to watch Legally Blonde at some point this year. Um, I'm sorry that that doesn't happen. So, it's a good so we'll, <laughs> yeah. So we'll go ahead and start our game. Do you know Fresno? And again, what you guys are going to do is just work together which ones you think are true and which ones are false. So Elena, I'll go ahead and let you start with the very first question or the very first statement about Fresno. All right, ladies. Number one, Fresno is the capital of California. False. False. We all know that's false. <laughs> if you were talking about agriculture, we would have to claim it, but not equality. So. Right. <laughs> there you go. So, number two, Fresno is the fifth most populous city in California. That is true. Uh -huh. True. Okay. Number three, Fresno is the highest milk producing county in California. Oh. So, I tried to say it was true last time, and Chris talked us off. <laughs> 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 we had Chris on our team because I would have lost our brownie points. 
Number four, Fresno started as a train station in 1872. Yes, that is true. Yes, okay. it is. All right. Number five, the word Fresno means ash tree in Spanish. Yes. True. We all learned that in uh, third grade when we have to study Fresno County. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Number six, the dance style known as popping started in Fresno. Okay, so we disagreed last time. I said true. What do you guys think? I have no idea. I, I'll, I'll, I'll go with I'll what say you guys it. decide. Okay, okay, we're going with true. Okay. We're going. Okay. And here's, like, here's lucky number seven. <laughs> the 49ers originated in Fresno before moving to San Francisco. That's false. I'm I should have looked that one up. I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I'm there forever. My mom's a San Francisco baby, so. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And number eight, we made it. Yeah. Fresno. <laughs> Fresno is the closest major city to Yosemite National Park. Yes. True. Number nine, the population of Fresno is larger than Poland. <laughs> no. Oh, heck of a question. What a question. <laughs> right at half a million. There's got to be more than half a million people in Poland, don't you think? I don't know. Okay, so I say false. Yeah, I'll say false. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And then the last one, Cher was yes. a student at Fresno <laughs> High School. Oh, was it Fresno High School? High school or did she leave before she went to high school? She's from Fresno. She went to Roosevelt, didn't she? Did she go to Roosevelt? She may have been for like a month. <laughs> we'll say true. I'll say true. Okay, so, so this is the full list. Um, which Four would you say are not true? Oh, not true. Yeah. Number one that, since that's the smallest, we'll go with that. So number one is not true. Okay. Number three was not true. Number seven was not true. Mm. So, so that means if there's four, that means it's nine or ten. Mm -hmm. Or six. Oh, no, no we already did false. Nine, okay. nine, no, I think it's nine or ten is the one we have to choose from. I think nine. Okay. Nine. We'll go with nine. Okay, so so the correct answers are those. You are you did quite we well. Did so all of those that are not crossed out are true. The ones that are crossed out are false. Um, Fresno is not as large as Poland. Poland has about 37 million people. Fresno, as you were correct, is almost at a million, according to the internet. Um, and Cher did go to Fresno High School. Uh -huh. Oh, she and, did? Okay. Yeah, she did go to Fresno oh, High School. She graduated. Well done, ladies. Well done. Yeah. Well done. So you get the entire truckload of brownie points. Even yeah. better, you do not have to watch Legally Blonde at some point this year. <laughs> well done. So very Let's cool. Doesn't look happy with that. No, <laughs> yeah. watch it anyway. <laughs> That's right. Very cool. So now we just kind of we want to talk about um, just just Fresno in general, you as educators and. I uh, just want to kind of get into just what does CTE look like in Fresno County? And so I'll let Elena kind of lead the discussion on our first question. And uh, we'll just, yeah, like I said, pretend we're at Starbucks and we'll have a great conversation about this stuff. So ladies, I'm really interested in learning how long each of you has been in or worked in uh, CTE. Who wants to start? I'll yeah. go. Um, so I started out, as I mentioned, I started out as a special day class teacher and I moved into um, CTE um, 34 years ago. So I taught for six years and then I moved out of the classroom and part of my being out of the classroom was supervising my special ed and my ROP students because we didn't have classes on my campus for ROP. We had CTE classes, but my kids had to travel and it was before uh, the internet when you could track everybody electronically. And so we had to make sure that somebody went actually over to that center, uh, that high school, to make sure our kids were actually showing up and going to class. Nice. Uh, so that was my first entree into CTE. Okay. Wow. 
and I started 36 years ago um, as a business teacher, uh, fresh out of college, and uh, probably about year four into my career at Clovis West High School, I then picked up an ROP class and taught the ROP until I left um, in 96. And I've been at the county office ever since. Wow, great, thank you. Chris? And I started teaching ROP in uh, my fourth year. Um, I was also at Clovis West High School. And um, Susan Fisher came and recruited me to teach this class that hadn't hadn't been taught before. It was kind of like a, you know, let's see if it works. And I um, and I loved it and went away with it. I it was careers in education, and it was it was just wonderful to teach. And I became a mentor teacher. And because I was teaching CTE, they they kept giving me more CTE teachers as they were hired in the district. And so I ended up. A lot of the CTE teachers in Clovis Unified, I, I was their mentor on um, their first two years of teaching. And it, it was just, it's so much fun. I love teaching mm -hmm. ROP. It's and just wonderful. Great. <laughs> what? Wow. And a great mentor for us as well. So we have many years of experience sitting in on this podcast. So that yeah. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's Thanks. really yeah, that's really cool. And it's, it's neat to see, because um, CT Teach is founded on mentoring. It's just neat to see how, how you guys can attest to how powerful mentoring is, especially for, you know, when we're taking people from industry and putting them in the classroom and, and it's neat. So, yeah. And I love CTE too. I, CTE as well. I always told my students, you guys are getting to learn things that I used to get in trouble for or doing in school and <laughs> you guys get to learn it. So that is great. So, so my, our next question for you is, um, Again, we kind of want to highlight Fresno County. So can you talk to just what are some of the CT programs that Fresno has? Um, just kind of share, like, what are your strengths? I, Valerie, you mentioned agriculture. I'm assuming that's a big part of what you guys do up there. So maybe talk to, about that. Sure. So I, I mentioned that we serve Fresno, Madera, Mariposa. Um, so overall, in um, we use 18, 19 numbers because the 1920 stuff doesn't it hasn't all been reported yet. So we had about 70,000 high school students across the board. And of those about, um, where was my number here? We had 75% um, of every high, of all those high school students take a CTE course of some type. Our ROP serves about between five and 6,000 students a year. We've stayed traditional with serving only juniors and seniors. Um, and in our area, um, we, we like to look at data because, you know, we've had to do a lot of political advocacy to keep funding uh, mm -hmm. coming. And so, you know, in those three counties, the graduation rate is 88%, which is, uh, it's pretty par with the statewide average for the yeah. cohort groups. But we look at our ROP students, our ROP student graduation rate is 99.6%. Wow, that's so great. Fantastic. What it shows us is that we know that most dropouts happen because they're disengaged, not because they're behind, right? Which right. is a, a misnomer uh, that people have. And so because we've been able to, with the participation of our 22 school districts that participate in our ROP, we've been able to really stick to the model of a double period or a, you know, a longer. So we're not doing, I, I, we, Janet and I and Chris, we all work together at Clovis West. So we had a superintendent who used to talk about everything being a mile wide and an inch deep. Um, mm -hmm. By having our program the way it's run as a traditional ROP, we're able to go a half mile wide and maybe six or 12 inches deep. You know I mean? We're really able to give kids an opportunity to have work with learning within their class time. Um, and so in our area, um, there's a ton of, uh, of ag as you would expect, but what it's really kind of surprising uh, what inches ag out by about barely by like one, one school in terms of our rankings is health, health oh. science, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the patient pathway, uh, patient care pathway um, within health is our number one sector followed by ag. Um, ag is pretty strong as you can imagine and there's a variety of it and the original getting academic credit for CTE started in the Central Valley at Chowchilla Union High School District uh, with a gentleman named Lloyd McCabe who eventually went on to CDE and they're not in our 
our ROP service area, but there's a long history of, of ag getting all that science credit as, um, as we went forward. So um, our, our number three area is arts, media, and entertainment. We have a lot of, of uh, video, a lot okay. of multimedia. multimedia production, animation kinds of stuff. And then for us, number four is public services, criminology, criminal justice, wow. uh, firefighting. Those are, those are really big pathways. And, and those programs, we've been really fortunate with Fresno State. Fresno State has had a program called Unitrack, which would look like dual enrollment at the community college level. And so a lot of those top programs have great relationships and, and partnerships with Fresno State as well as the community colleges. So those are kind of our top three or four. Um, we have something in all 15 industry sectors. The least enrolled would be energy, environment, and utilities. Um, and, and what we found over time is there can be really great things that we think kids need to know, but you still have to convince 15 and 16 year olds that it's something fun and interesting and, and package it in a way that they're going to enjoy. So that's, that's kind of our overall data picture. Okay. Wow. Pretty cool. Impressive for sure. Yeah. Okay, question number three. What are some of the student teacher highlights of your programs? Who wants to share about any wonderful teachers and what they're doing or highlights from this past year that stuck out? Um, you know, I have to say that we have some of the best teachers around in ROP. Um, they're hardworking, they put in the hours um, because a lot of them do community classroom. Um, they're managing their classroom instruction, but then they're also managing their students out on those sites. And um, they've developed some amazing partnerships um, that we have been able then to tap into um, for our Career Tech Expo that happens every October. Um, where we get about 4,000 students that come to Chickchancy Park, which is our minor league stadium. And we have over 150 employers there that evening, um, highlighting and showcasing for parents and teachers, um, and teachers and students, um, what it takes to, to be in that field. And uh, parents are able that night to then understand, hey, you know what, path, that college path, isn't necessarily um, what my student needs because if they want to be in the construction industry maybe they could go in through an apprenticeship and so we have those types of businesses there sharing salary sharing levels of employment um, what it takes licensing um, certifications etc um, so we all share those resources and it's it's been a wonderful partnership um, we do have teachers that are doing some great things, are getting our kids employed. Uh, Kelly Eichmann at Clovis East High School, she gets probably about 30% of her students are employed at the end of her class every single year. Wow. And has three sections, um, which is about almost probably about 100 kids. Mm -hmm. So when you have 30 kids that out of those experiences that they have on their community classroom that are being hired, um, that's pretty exciting. Um, and just down the street, this high school, her husband, another amazing teacher, he's in our construction pathway. And he actually um, has three sections now of ROP. And one of them focuses on uh, the seniors going out to work. And most of those kids are now employed as well. Um, and I can say that, you know, even in our, at our smaller rural districts, we have some great teachers that really embrace the community and um, go out and find those business partners and have kids placed. Carruthers is a place that really has bought into our community classroom and they've made all the necessary adjustments where they had transportation for the kids to go and get um, some experience in downtown Fresno in the welding area. Um, so, and you know, and that takes scheduling with not only the teacher, um, but transportation as well. And um, I can honestly say that I, I think that we have some, we have great partnerships with all 22 of our districts. And um, it's hard to highlight because in each district, they're true, they're superstars, they really are. Um, 
And, you know, in Chris, I think a big highlight for us um, with our mentors, we have three mentors. So Chris is one of them and we have two others, Janet Terosian and Camilla Sutherland. Um, they are a highlight. Um, they are a bright, they're bright shining stars as far as I'm concerned because they keep our teachers employed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, which is important because they can get lost. And I, I honestly, yeah. I can see progress that we have made because when I first started obviously we didn't have CT teach and we could lose teachers they were disengaged from their district because they were in the career technical area they didn't necessarily have that tie into the mainstream high school um, and now we have that um, and with the mentors they really bring that together so I think that's always a highlight for us as well oh, for sure um, yeah, we wouldn't, CTE wouldn't be where they are without the mentors behind it, um, helping these teachers and providing some sort of foundation. So you're yeah, very absolutely. right. That's a huge highlight for, yeah. for you it guys. Is. Yeah, it is. Um, and uh, like I had mentioned our CT Expo, um, and then also in the spring, we have our Crew Skills Challenge mm. that we put on with the local community college, with Fresno City College. We partner with them, and they actually run the competitions. They have their teachers in charge. They set the rules and we register students from all over Fresno County. Um, and they don't have to be just part of ROP. They can be any, it's open to any high school student and they compete in the career technical areas. Um, and that's always very exciting. Uh, we fill up their gym for our wards um, and the kids are really very excited. It's it's like an athletic event um, when you get into that gym. It's it's great, and the kids all sit together, and um, you can barely hear yourself uh, think uh -huh. so loud. And they're and all the cheering. It's wonderful, um, and we appreciate the partnership we have with City College in putting in the time because it does take a lot of time sure. on their part. And I mean, because they are you know they have to reschedule classes or cancel classes in order to to put the event on. So we truly appreciate that. Val, is there anything I missed? No, but I think, Chris, why don't you highlight a couple of your positive experiences? Yeah. Well, this year was a, a, a bit because of going from teaching in a classroom and mentoring and then all of a sudden I'm mentoring via Zoom and long distance and, and um, but there was one of the highlights, the teacher I was working with in uh, Mariposa um, when COVID struck, she, her, she was teaching careers and um, medical careers. And her kids were all placed in the hospitals and in the doctor's offices in, in the county. And they all had to come back to the classroom, well, back to home. And, and she just took off with that and had them do um, video conferencing and, and actually making a video, um, a couple of them, on how to wash hands and things to do to prevent your um, infection. And, and all the hospital, the, well, the hospital in, in Mariposa and the doctor's offices have it in their offices as their feedback while patients are waiting. Nice. So she took something and just, oh, okay, then let's do this and, and, and made it work. And, and her kids are almost 100% committed to doing something in the medical uh, field. And that, that was a real highlight to see how somebody all you know just went with it and 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 ran with the program and 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 adapted very quickly yeah um, it was very impressive amazing to see what teachers can do when when they're given very little time and um they just they just come up with some really great things because we experienced that here at here as well that our online our, our brick and mortar teachers who never taught online ended up being, most of them ended up being really, really stellar and thought of things that they would have never thought of had this not occurred. Mm -hmm. So that's always a great thing. Yeah. That's been difficult for, you know, for some of my teachers, it was like, we didn't sign up to do this online. Right. And, and, and so they, they have been, they've been struggling, but they're, they're making it work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For sure. And, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. One of the things when we were up there for, I think we were up there for your in-service this year. And one of the things I thought was really cool was the way you guys um, would highlight your students with like the digital or the marketing campaigns of like the posters and all that kind of stuff. Do you, do you mind sharing about that really quick? Just because I think it's so neat. I would love other people to hear the idea. Okay. Um, 
And that is something that um, one of our coordinators came up with a few years ago, Anthony Ayurza. Um, and we tried it, we tie it in with our CT Expo. Um, what we do is at the end of the year, we ask teachers, who are your superstar students um, that are going into the field right from high school? Um, or, or they're going to earn, or they've earned a certification and now they're working in the field. And so we go through those nominations and we choose uh, about five of those kids to five to six to highlight in different industry areas. Um, and so we, they come back, uh, we do a photo shoot with them and uh, they end up on our promotional poster every year. And then also they're highlighted in the program for that evening at CT Expo. Um, they're on the cover and then inside we have a profile page for each one of them. Um, that talks about um, how their ROP class influenced them, um, their education, what they had to do then to move on into the industry um, where they're working and a little bit more about the background of what they're doing. Um, so it's really uh, been a great highlight. They, they get so excited uh, and we do even pop-ups with them um, that we place around the venue and it's pretty exciting. Um, and we're and we're thankful that the, the teachers every year they keep sending us these amazing students that that do that. Yeah. Such a great idea, and I know that uh, Chris, we were already talking about you know Car Rock needs to ad adopt something like that. So we definitely will uh, be looking more into that. But that's a, a great way to highlight students for yeah, sure. It's really neat. And Makes then bringing them to our fall conference, which is where you were with us. Mm -hmm. um, we've tried to kind of bring them back and get them to talk about that experience because we've got a lot of new teachers who haven't had anybody graduate yet. And so it's good for them to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and, and everything that they're going through trying to get their um, sea legs in the classroom coming from industry is, is going to be worth it because you're going to have these, this end product that you can be really proud of. And, and the other thing that we're very fortunate to have in our county office is we have a really strong relationship with our local media and every Monday night there is a little three to five minute segment that's on the six o'clock news on our NBC affiliate called Education Matters. That's cool. uh, it's sponsored so it's the video company that puts the videos together is being paid to do the stories and the, the thing that works well for us is CTE is so visual and there's so many great things that you can do. And the two folks, one is a retired uh, TV reporter and the other is an Emmy award winning videographer who's been an advisor for our programs for a long time. So it's really helpful when the two people responsible for the series are real supporters of what you do and understand it um, and have had their own children in our classes. So really understand it, not just from an industry perspective, but from a parent perspective and what they've been able to see their own children do. And so what that has allowed us to have is a much more public exposure of programs across the board and whether it's interviews with those students because they're already over 18 and you can really follow what happens after school is out with some of them or the B-roll that's behind it. If we need to do something, we can call upon them and say, hey, we, we need a little clip to do something. Janet and I are putting, Janet mostly, is we're putting the curriculum together for our credential program. Well, we're going to be able to pull some of that B-roll to be able to demonstrate some things. So I think, you know, we're, we're fortunate. Our superintendent um, kind of has three priority areas and Career Tech Ed is one of them. And when you have a, a boss who's elected, um, who really feels like he's got to connect with the community. I think all these events that involve parents and students, and I think what we've seen over time is we're in a place before COVID hit, but we're in a place, at least in our community, and I really think in our state, where parents are more um, empowered to speak up on behalf of their students mm -hmm. and knowing what works for their students and, um, and not just pushing them down a particular path because it's what everybody does, but really looking at the skills uh, and the uh, temperament and the interests of their own students and trying to help them craft that. And I think one of the pieces when Janet was talking about our expo event, one of the things that we've tried to convey there is there's a lot of different kinds of college and post-secondary training. So we're trying to expand the definition of that word to not just mean a four-year experience, 
because for some people, they don't even think about community college as being college. So right. really trying to expand that, you know, when you're standing there and you're talking to the Caterpillar dealer or you're talking to the John Deere and they have their own training schools and they're offering scholarships to kids to, to go, you know, and get training and come back. Or you can stand next to somebody that's a long time employer in the community and they say, that program at Fresno City College is where I hire all my people. That's the purpose of that evening is to give parents a level of comfort so that they don't prohibit their child from experimenting. And we're saying, you know, when I go into classrooms, if a kid says, you know, I took this computer class because I just, you know, everybody's going to be, you know, we went through that period of time where everybody was going to be a web designer in their garage and make a million dollars. And now cybersecurity is really important. And, and what kids see on TV and what the reality of some of those jobs are, some of those jobs are much more tedious and boring in, in parts of them than what, what they're used to. And so sometimes they come into a program or a pathway with a totally unrealistic perception of what it is, right? And, and so sometimes they'll say, you know, I'm, I'm glad I took this class, but I know this is not what I want to do. I have some skills and I know I'm going to be able to do certain things, but this is not, this is not for me. To me, that's almost as equally a success yes. as who finds their passion because how many people have we all gone to school with who were like wandering aimlessly through college trying to figure out what was going to stick and what, you know, was going to be for them. And so, you know, I think just trying to make it so it's part of the overall conversation and, 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 and do we still have educators that think if you don't go to a UC, you're, you know, you're not fulfilling your potential. Absolutely. You know, I think that's just going to be that never ending uh, promotional campaign that we're all going to be on. But I think, I think, parents as a community are becoming much more vocal in their support of CTE and their willingness to, to allow their kids to branch out and experiment and add to their repertoire before they graduate from high school. Yeah, Valerie, you bring up a really good point because I often say to teachers and students, you know, CTE, what we do really, really well is we expose students to many, many, many different types of industries and careers. But then what we do also just as well is we expose students to things that they do not want to go into or, and that that's just as important. So when you go through that, take that vet class and then you decide, no, I have want nothing to do with animals. Well, at least now you know that and we've exposed you to that. So you have to have both for sure. That's really important. And I think about the kids that used to sign up for child development because they thought it meant they were going to play, do arts and crafts. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they found out that, no, you're actually a teacher and you're teaching them their pre-reading skills and you have to write lesson plans and stuff. And it was kind of like, but I don't even, I don't like this. And I'm like, then great. Cause I don't want to have to look at you across the table in the future, trying to figure out if you're going to be a good first grade teacher. Right. When it, right. Because, you, because you got that far down the pipeline and didn't see another alternative, mm -hmm. you know, and you finished because you always thought you wanted something. And then, when you get there, you decide, I mean, we don't need people who, you know, who don't right. want to be where they are in any profession, but, uh, you know, if we can give them those experiences and, and try to show them what's different from what they see on YouTube or social media or television, what the real day-to-day -day of it is, I think that's a valuable lesson. Sure. Yeah, that's right. really Thank great. Okay. Yes, so you guys brought up just fantastic um, points about just the the impact that you have and and one of the things that impressed me when I was up there earlier this year was just how huge um, your organization is and how many how many how many teachers would you say were at that in service that I was privileged to be at we have 180 teachers and then all of our administrators that are connected with our program from the school districts mm -hmm. also attend uh, along with superintendents Wow. Um, they like to know what's going on. So we usually have about 230 there. Yeah. Uh, in yeah, that's, that's great. And what's, it's phenomenal that it's all, it was all based around just career technical education and what you guys were doing this year. And it was a lot of fun to be a part of. So really, so with that, so I'm kind of segueing into that just to say to my next question for you is um, how do you think CTE and Fresno County Office of Ed are, are impacting Fresno County? Uh, you guys kind of mentioned some of that already, but what, what do you see in your day-to-day? -day? Just what is the impact you think you're having with where you're at? Well, I think, you know, just from some of the data, we know that for a lot of our schools, um, we are impacting their graduation rate for kids that are connected. 
Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's a big piece of, you know, the dashboard is, you know, everybody's concern uh, for the college and career readiness indicator. And so from a Fresno County perspective, as well as a statewide perspective, you know, we try to make sure that we're connected in at the state level so that people aren't making decisions at, in a vacuum whether it's the State Board of Education or if it's the CDE Accountability Division or whoever, um, oftentimes um, they make decisions and there's that whole thing, you know, about unintended consequences, right? So it's important for us to be connected with those superintendents and the, and the CalPADS folks within the district so that we have accurate data, um, people really understand what they're reporting and that they understand what certain things mean and, and what consequences they have as they implement them. So, so one of the, um, the luxuries that we have being a CTE department at the county office is because those teachers belong to their individual districts, they're not our direct employees. So we really truly are a support to what's happening in districts. And that gives us, um, we're not their evaluator. So our mentors certainly aren't evaluating. That's a very confidential process. But even our coordinators like Janet and her three colleagues that are out in districts, we're there to provide um, suggestions. And I mean, we have a little bit of a hammer. If they're not living up to our quality, we can say, you know what? Um, we're not quite an ROP level program for this. And so you know, consider who else you'd like to move your program over to because we're not going to continue over there because you know what happens in one district affects the kids in the other 21 mm -hmm. because it does Fresno ROP on it and that's a long time discussion with our superintendents about what are we going to have that's consistent across all classes that are the same uh, um, across the county so that as an employer when you see the certificate you have a sense of at least a baseline amount of information. And then some programs that have a different kind of schedule where kids might get more time in, they're gonna go above and beyond, but there's gonna be a core amount of competencies and, and things that are, that are taught in those programs. And so I think that's where districts really have relied on us to provide that expertise to make sure they're hiring the right people, to make sure that they're buying the right equipment, um, to help them connect to the right employers, particularly our rural folks that don't maybe have a lot of a specific industry near them, but how we can connect them to people uh, virtually or, or otherwise. So I think for us, that luxury of being able to follow the politics and the advocacy pieces and being a pipeline of information to our districts so they know what's coming. Um, we've been really fortunate in the Central Valley. We were very, very successful, our districts, uh, in applying for the Prop 51 um, and previous to that, Prop 1D, the CTE facilities funds. So we've seen a huge investment across all kinds of districts in this, in this area in terms of realizing that, you know, facilities that were built in the 30s, 40s, 50s that mm -hmm. they never really had any money for. Uh, once that bond money was available, we've seen so much improvement. And I think that's been an impact. We've sat on those advisory committees. We've helped them go visit programs that they could emulate and get a chance to look at what a good facility looks like. So I think all those things that make it really tough for a district person who's responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, governance and instruction and dealing with real teachers and real kids on a day-to-day -day basis, um, we can kind of fill that gap for them and, and provide that, that backup for them. And then because of our statewide reach, it may be that the program they need to go look at for a certain facility might be with one of our colleagues in Bakersfield, or it could mm. be out in San Bernardino or San Diego or whatever. And, and we've got that network to be able to help them, them do that. And I think they trust that we're going to give them um, really honest, straightforward answers. So I think our, we have a political and an advocacy kind of an impact that's way different than the huge impact that like what Chris is doing in the classroom is. And I think what we've done, what Janet has done with Chris and the other ladies with CTE Teach has been huge because while we've been involved with CTE Teach from the beginning and I'll let them talk about it, we've always had more people who needed the services than the contract right. allocation to provide for. So we've always, from the very beginning, even before when we were part of a consortium, um, we've always supplemented to have more mentors but use the CTE Teach uh, 
materials and philosophies to support those folks. So ladies. Right. Great answer. Yeah. I, I what, just to tie in with that one comment that you made, I, I, I always feel like I'm strapped for time. I don't spend enough time with my teachers. I could do, I could do three to four hours a week and it would not be time that was wasted. Um, it's, it's just so, um, that connection that we build, that relationship that we build has to happen. And it's so important for them to grow and trust us and realize that we're there to, you know, answer any questions. I mean, I handed out a lot of clinics, you know, at this last year and, and that was important. It was just important to be there. And I, I really miss being in the classroom with my teachers. Um, yeah, I have to say all three of them are, they're amazing. I mean, they're great at doing everything that I need them to do for the program and check off all the boxes and, and make sure they're doing their observations. Um, but it goes beyond that. They really developed those great relationships with those teachers um, that I think is probably a big highlight. And I think I'm most proud of that um, because at any point in time, you could probably walk in on them, um, and I think you'd find Chris on the floor with the teacher who uh, I is <laughs> devastated and sitting against the wall thinking with his head in his hands, and Chris was right down there with him. Um, or, you know, or Janet Trojan sitting in a, in a, or standing up and moving around a classroom in a shop and saying, okay, this has to be changed, let's go, and let's rip this out. And going in and doing it with the teacher, um, and re you know, and setting up those tools correctly, um, and the same goes with Chris and moving classrooms. Same with Camilla, um, they really put their heart and soul into it. And I think Chris is right. There's never enough time, um, and so uh, I think that's what makes our 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 group of of mentors so special because they truly buy into this and they see the value um and they do go above and beyond and they're amazing wow. well and so many of our districts are rural and so teachers are the only one so there so you don't have a department you i think everybody has about two ag teachers at least but so when we bring teachers together, whether it's for an in-service around a particular course or the fall conference piece or our evening event or our competition, for many of them, that's their department. That's, those are their colleagues. Um, and so that's who they network with because they don't have anybody else on their campus that does what they do. So they don't, can't just run next door like a math teacher or a science teacher or an English teacher could do and say, oh, what do you, this, something's not right with this lesson. What do you think? I mean, so the just that whole networking ability to connect them to other professionals. Um, and then for the newer teachers that are coming from industry, they bring so much more about what's the newest experience, what's the newest technology. So there's a really nice blend of they might be a brand new teacher, but they've got some industry stuff to share. And then the folks who've been teaching a little longer, that's important for them to get that up upskilling if you will but then they can help with the classroom management and and some of those other logistical things that take time and experience in the classroom to learn so i think that's the other way we've been able to have an impact is to make those people feel like they're part of something bigger than just their small classroom or even their small their small school our smallest school probably has less than 200 students in the high school and then we'll go up through fresno unified that's the fourth largest district or fifth, depending on where Long Beach is today, you know, in the so, you know, their capacity as a big district to, to deal with stuff is much greater. Um, and, and we see such a turnover, particularly in our smaller schools, there's a huge turnover in administrators. And sometimes the administrators like tag, you're it. Um, this year. Yeah. I did it last year, it's your turn this year, or somebody's moved on because they've now gotten a little bit of experience and they can you know, move up to a higher paying district. So for a lot of our districts, my staff is the continuity. They're the consistency. Some of them have worked with my coordinators for more years than they've worked with their superintendent or their school principal because of the churn. Um, so, and so there's a reliance on the expertise in our office. And that's a fine line between being dictatorial and making people feel like you're oppressing them and telling them what to do when it's their district versus 
making people feel like you're there to, to help them not make a mistake, I think, is, is that fine line that we walk as a county program. Wow. So, so I guess that really takes us into, now that you've talked about the impact, is how do you envision CTE will grow in Fresno County? Well, I think as people have looked at the data in terms of, like I said, the, the graduation rate and the number of completers and the kids who are sticking with it and they're able to be a pathway completer along with stuff, we, we do have programs that meet the A to G admission requirements. We're very careful in considering what those are because we've watched other places kind of tip the balance over to too much research and philosophy and history and not enough hands-on. So they're sort of thematic academic classes as opposed to skills classes. So we're always really careful in that particular development of that. Um, and, and I think we have a, a good balance in what our districts are looking for. But I think what people are seeing is they can have both. They can have kids that are meeting A to G requirements and kids that want to attend a four-year program and get all those brownie points on the college career readiness dashboard piece. But they're also retaining more kids and helping kids gain more soft skills and some of those other kind of leadership skills that they need by having CTE. And what we've noticed is they're finding ways to keep adding more, adding more programs on or trying to really help in working with us and identify what's getting a little old and stale. And, you know, one of our biggest uh, problems in CTE has been, well, I'm just going to keep this class till that person retires. Then we'll change. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to retire in two years. Let me keep building birdhouses and don't make me try to build a tiny house. Yeah. Right. Person can do that. Well, I think there's a much more reality that we don't have time to lose those kids. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons that we were so appreciative of all the work that Janet did to get the credential program up and running here locally so that more people would, would get their training and we could be more hands-on with them and make sure that they're getting the right direction um, in how, how to get their programs up and running. But we've, we've really seen, again, from the Prop 51 bond measures, you know, people are building these new facilities. Well, you've made that commitment to the state to build those facilities. You can't turn them into something else. You can't turn that wonderful technology stuff. You can't turn it into a science lab. You know, it has to be CTE. And so I think, you know, as they make those investments, I think it has made them feel like they've got um, more opportunity to, to add program in. And, and Janet works more directly with some of the districts that are doing that. And I think there's there's a, a bigger awareness now with parents, and that's that was the the big the toughest nut to crack, honestly. Um, and I think with a lot of the promotional things and what we're able to do uh, with our county office and pass down to our districts um, to promote CTE and to make parents more aware of pathways and certifications and dual enrollment and along with Unitrack um, and UC approved courses, uh, that has made a big impact as well on developing pathways. Um, and you know, we, we aren't able to do any of this without of course the sup our superintendent who supports CTE. Um, and he actually came to us a few years ago about CT Expo and because we always had done a college night uh, that was sponsored by pg e at the time and said, hey, what about doing this for CTE? Mm -hmm. um, and from that, you know, one idea, we have this huge event that really promotes an awareness um, with career pathways uh, amongst our, our community. And um, I, I think that really, that one single thing has made a big impact because then that led to Education Matters every week. Um, and now we have districts doing their own mini expos as well. And, um, and those mini expos in their own districts are then face to face with the teachers in those districts. And then the, the parents feel like, oh, I can talk, I can ask questions about what are they gonna be doing? And this is my profession. So I'm gonna go and ask them, what, what are they teaching? I'm gonna kind of test them. Well when you have people from industry that are teaching, they know their stuff. Um, so it just, it just really shows that the, the parents that, okay, it's okay for my kid to be in these classes. 
Um, and there is truly a pathway, a post-secondary option, whether it's college or apprenticeship or going right into work and, and they can make a good living. So I, I think all those things together have really promoted and will continue to grow our CT programs in the Valley. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> We've been able to add some workshop features into it for the day to make it really, you know, we've had a couple employers come and say, well, I want to bring the kids to my, my space, which is near your, near the exhibit area. And we're going to work with them on a project during the day. We'll bring the, what they build. One of our um, four seas construction is a steel structure company. So they go and they, they give them like a day's workshop and they bring everything back over to the stadium. And that's the display for that company is what those kids built that day. So now you have these kids who worked on something, who have something to show for it, whose parents come after work in the evening and they can say, look what I did today. Or we frame a tiny house during the day. And when those parents come at night, they can talk to the folks that are California tiny house in terms of employees and who's an employee that used to be in an ROP class and this is how they got exposed to it. And here's what my kid did today. Or when you have one of the most prominent cardiac surgeons in our area conduct a cow heart dissection, but <laughs> and you've got, you know, a hundred kids in their scrubs, and parents can wow. see that and see the level of commitment of people that they drive by on the street and see their name on a marquee in front of a, you know, medical building or something. You know, there, there's, we, we've really made it a hands-on thing. So it is not your typical career fair, walk around and pick up tchotchkes and things. It's more yeah. about, you know, what is it, what do you do in this job? And, and what kind of training did I get? Not just what can I make, but, but right. it's, it also helps us be able to connect. So we've got in the medical area where we've got, you know, the firefighters and the EMTs and the ambulance folks, and we've got our mobile health unit from the county office with the nurses and the LVNs who run it saying, hey, this is what I do. Come and check this out. This is what we do at schools for kids. Um, we've got Valley Children's Hospital, which is our huge uh, children's hospital for 10 counties here, 13 counties, I believe, here in Central California. Um, and their staff is talking about, oh, did you go to the medical unit yet? Yeah, here's the shot mobile. Here's our program. Here's where we get our training. And then you've got UC San Francisco's medical residency program that's here. You know, so what we've done is it's not just the employers, it's the employers and then whatever post-secondary supports them. So when that person who's working for that company says, when Chevron is here, who's our big sponsor, when Chevron says, well, we get a lot of our folks from the engineering department at Fresno State, and that's two tables down, you know, a family can spend their time in an area where they think they have interest and, and really get some fundamental information. So we have a prominent table at college night. We're right outside the entrance doors before they go into all the colleges to say, hey, you're here tonight, talk about, find out where programs are, and then come back in two weeks when we have this other event and then you can kind of begin to build those things together so that you pick a college based on your interests and what you want to do and what's going to get you where you want to go as opposed Good. to, you know, I like the football team here or I think I'd mm -hmm. like to be in the city and, you know, we're never going to get rid of those things. But, yeah. but, but then it makes the conversation, the CTE conversation about, well, who's got the right kind of programs for you? And, you know, and we're really fortunate because for our area, for ag, for education, for health, we've got really wonderful programs here in the Valley. Um, there's a new medical school starting at UC Merced. We have a couple private medical schools that are starting. So you can help expand that information to parents. So everything isn't about going to the Bay Area or going to Southern California. Um, it's, it's about those are great options and you may choose those, but let's help you find things that are based on what you're interested in. I don't yeah. want to go somewhere and then find out what you were passionate about, that's, that's not even a major at that school, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids don't have that conversation until they're like, you know, have two or three offers in their hand and have to pick. And they didn't even realize that the place they thought they were going doesn't have the program they wanted. Mm -hmm. They were looking at other things. So I think that's where I think we've been able to do more with counselors and and parents and having those kind of conversations. And I think that's just making things more vibrant so that when people pick Fresno State, they're picking Fresno State, not just because it's less expensive, they can live at home perhaps, or they've grown up wearing red and they're a bulldog and that's what they want to say, uh -huh. but they know that they're there because it's an award-winning program. You know, yeah. they're, 
they're one of the best. If you want to do water technology, there's no place better. If you want to do certain things. So I think that's the other impact I see over the long haul is better informed students moving on to post-secondary. Yeah. So we don't have as much of that, like sort of hanging out, trying to figure it out. And as the post-secondary people are finally kind of feeling the pinch that we've had in K-12 in terms of attention and graduation rates. And now, you know, they, they're not really in a position where they can have kids hanging out for six, seven, eight, nine years anymore, mm -hmm. right? We're now, where before the attitude was kind of like, hey, they're adults. If they want to hang around and keep taking things, that's their business. Well, now resources are getting so much more restricted that yeah. you have to be more prudent as well. And I think, you know, having kids that know what they want to do and not getting to be a junior in college and then changing your major because it isn't what you thought. Yeah. Um, those things are going to be, you know, people are more cash conscious. They're, they're looking at, you know, they don't want to have student debt. Um, so parents are really excited when you can help them narrow things down and, and, and feel like you're not eliminating those choices by saying CTE. You're helping them put one more tool in their tool belt about how do you make those decisions after high school. Yeah. Great those, answers for sure. Yeah, those are definitely great. <laughs> and so, so our, our coming year, this is going to be our first year where we're putting some exploratory labs into our middle schools. And I'm so excited that our middle school kids will be able to experiment with different sectors of CTE so that when they do get to high school, they'll actually have more of an idea of what they want to do, which will even have more of an idea of this is what I want to do with my career. And so I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's neat to see what in here, what you guys are doing in, in impacting in that way. So very cool. One more question, Chris? Last, yeah. So last, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted by the excitement. <laughs> so, uh, so last, CT teaches is primarily it's a program uh, that focuses on mentoring CT educators across the state of California. So, I like to ask every in every episode, e each of our panelists, who was someone who personally or professionally mentored you and helped you along your journey to where you are now. And this could be a family member, a coworker, a teacher, whoever. So we'll start um, with Valerie and we'll work our way through to Janet, the new Chris, and just who, who would your, gets your mentor shout out? Well, you know, I, and fortunately you gave us that question so we could think about it because it is one of those really tough ones. And like several different names came to mind from, from one, one of my grandfathers all the way through. But I think in terms of what I'm doing today and the work I've done here at Fresno ROP, it would have been uh, the man who hired me, who was the administrator in charge of Fresno ROP when I, when I was a teacher in the district and, and brought me over uh, to the county office. And that was a gentleman named Bud Stewart. Um, he really, when I was out in the district and I was just a liaison, he was a great sounding board and um, he was always involved politically. So he gave me that opportunity to see how you can run program, but still make those statewide connections partly to make sure the Valley didn't get left behind over something that was just an LA thing or a San Francisco thing. So, right. so I to say um, Bud Stewart for me. Very yeah, nice. Cool. Good. Janet? Well, I've actually had a couple. Um, I have to go back to my, my teaching career um, was my department chair, Kathy Smith Yang, um, who has since retired. Uh, but she was amazing from day one for me. She actually was my master teacher when I was doing my final student teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, later on became my department chair. And she really taught me to get to know the kids. She always would say, get to know your kids. And I think back about how invaluable that was in building those relationships because the kids respond to you better. Um, and she said that from day one. So, um, and then also just everything that she did on curriculum and remember we did Perkins together. She did a lot. So she did a lot for me and teaching me a lot about just the education system. And then I think in moving on, um, Bud Stewart again, when I started at, at Fresno ROP, he was the administrator and uh, our boss. And he was really, uh, he still is an amazing man and very politically astute um, and a visionary. That's what I really uh, value um, was the vision that he had. It was not, what are we doing now, but what are we going to be doing in five years? Um, that really um, made me always think and kept us on our toes. <laughs> very nice. Very cool. 
And Chris, who mentors the mentor? <laughs> Uh, I, I would have to, uh, Kathy Smith Yang hired me. Um, I was, um, and, and I loved working for her and, and I always felt supported and, um, but I, I, I hadn't really started teaching CTE at that point. I was, I was kind of, I, I wasn't doing an ROP class, but when I started doing CTE, ROP, Susan Fisher um, was one of the, the best supports I think that I had because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and she was always there answering questions, supporting me. I, I felt I can do this and, and eventually loved, loved my job. Very so nice. those two people. <laughs> Very cool. And so Chris, as a side note, um, CryRop has entrusted me to be a mentor, an official mentor this year. Um, so I will be emailing you a lot and say, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Um, I already wrote down Kleenex. I said, oh, Kleenex, that's a great idea. So they will get that in their supply box. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I would just want to say thank you all so much for um, just being here. I mean, it's, it's, it's always great to connect with you, even though it's via Zoom, but it's really cool that we can connect via Zoom. And I'm just so glad to have you guys here and, and be able to get to see you again. So we'll kind of close it up. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us on the CT Teach podcast. We hope you've enjoyed your time here with us as much as we have with you. And we also invite you to follow us on Twitter at CTE underscore teach and subscribe to our YouTube channel and multiple podcast stations at CTE Teach. So we close this month. Um, I like to close every month with an inspirational quote. This one actually comes from um, Ella Fitzgerald. And she said, just don't give up trying to do what you really want to do. Where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. So thank you all again for being here. You can go ahead and say bye. Bye, bye, bye Thank guys. you, everyone. Thank you, Fresno. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Bye.